Hey, what's up everybody? This is Mike. Welcome back to another video. I hope you're doing well. And in today's video, I'll show you a new technique which I recently found out about, and that is how to showcase speed in your drone photos. Let's check it out. First things first, I gotta give credit where credit is due and that is because I recently found out this guy Warsaw by Drone on Instagram and I would say he's quite specialized at this technique. He creates some epic fast paced photos and uh, yeah, after trying out this technique myself, I have so much respect for him because I know how hard it is to nail the focus and all the settings and actually create a photo like this so make sure you follow him I'll drop a link to his Instagram down in the description uh, but a couple of things before I get into how to create those shots this technique is quite advanced so you need to be aware um, of your surroundings you need to be very comfortable flying your drone in many situations you will be flying backwards so I wouldn't really recommend it to anyone uh, I would suggest to have a lot of experience before you try it out and of course always try to fly safely fly in an area where it's safe to try uh, because this involves some speed and if you are trying it in an area where accidents can happen it's dangerous from the photos i'm sure many of you would think that the drone is moving extremely quickly but that's not the case uh, the drone is actually moving uh, at 40 kilometers per hour, uh, which is still not too slow, but it's not that quick. So me and a friend of mine went outside the city to find a large open area where we can fly while he drives. So I was in the car trying to take a photo. And the key here is to find a large open space where you can get down close to the ground um, without hitting any obstacles. So maybe a wide open space without that many trees around. The next thing you need to focus on is the flying part. For this technique to work properly, you need to be moving at exactly the same speed as the vehicle that you're trying to shoot. So that's really tricky and it's really hard to maintain the same speed, keep the vehicle at the center of your screen and the center of your photo and not hit any obstacle. Uh, so it was of course my first time trying, so uh, it's, I guess it will get easier the more you try, but it was really tricky for me. Luckily, I managed to take a couple of photos which I'm happy with, but keep in mind, I took more than 100 and only four or five of them are actually usable. I got a few questions because I posted this photo on my Instagram stories and also here on my YouTube community tab. And many people ask me if there is any Photoshop involved uh, to create that motion blur. And the answer is no. I'll show you the raw photo and it doesn't have any motion blur applied to it. The key here is to use a long shutter speed that will create that motion blur that um, makes the whole photo look so epic. And because I follow this guy uh, that I mentioned in the beginning of this video, he said that the best shutter speed for photos like these is half a second. So that's exactly what I went with. I didn't even bother to try any other shutter speed. I figured if he's recommending that, then uh, uh, that's exactly what I'm going to use then. Uh, so half a second of a shutter speed, then the ISO should be, of course, the lowest possible, which is 100. And from then on, it's a matter of choosing the right aperture. For me, it was between seven and eight. Uh, and of course, if you are using a shutter speed of half a second, you also need to use ND filters to allow um, less light into the sensor. So I used uh, an ND filter from Freewell. These are the variable filters that they have. And I used the six to nine uh, stops filter set to nine, which is the darkest possible. Uh, and with this, I managed to use the settings which I already mentioned. So I'll put them on the screen once again, if you want to just copy those exact values. So ISO 100 shutter speed, half a second um, aperture, seven, eight, depending on the light. And from then on, it's just trial and error. Because uh, like I said, I have so many photos which are just not usable at all. Because of that high shutter speed, 
so many things will go wrong and so many things will be blurry, out of focus and just uh, not good looking. So you need to, to have a lot of patience when you try to recreate those shots. But in the end, they are very, very worth it. Uh, I am definitely looking forward to create some more following this technique. Uh, as long as you have an area which is empty with without many cars around, then uh, you will be good to go. A few more things that I want to mention before I go. Uh, the easiest way to follow this technique is obviously if you're flying behind your car uh, and just shoot it from the back. But I personally don't find these shots that interesting. The most interesting ones, in my opinion, are from the front, slightly angled, maybe at about 30, uh, 30 degrees. But uh, it's really complicated to fly backwards and follow uh, the car at the same speed and also keep that angle. So that's the really tricky part and that's why uh, I'm so fascinated by this guy who actually managed to pull off these amazing shots. But for my first ever try, I'm quite happy with these shots, the ones that I managed to get in focus. And that's pretty much it. You really need to be aware of your surroundings so you don't crash into a tree or something else. You need to follow the car at the same speed. You need to use the right settings and you need to be cautious and aware that accidents can happen. So you need to be prepared and try to minimize all risks possible. So that's pretty much it. I just wanted to share how I managed to, to take those shots. It seems many of you were interested in that type of video. So hopefully this is going to answer all of your questions. If you still have any questions, please let me know in the comment section below and I'll make sure to reply if I know the answer. Uh, but with that being said, thank you so much for watching today's video. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe with your notifications on so you're notified every time I post a new video. This is Mike from Drone Supremacy. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Ciao.